Hello and welcome to the Thursday, September 29th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from, well, somewhat rainy and windy Jacksonville, Florida. Usually when we talk about miscreants distributing a malware or attacking systems, well, we often talk about compromised systems, servers that are used to host malware or serve as an attack platform, or in some cases, just a proxy. But these days, there's another resource that may even be more valuable, a legitimate phone number. Telcos and the US federal government are working on ways to make it better to block some of the spam and malicious calls and messages you receive on your phone. But for an attacker, the best way to bypass all of this is if they can get a hold of a phone number that has some history that is known as non-malicious, similar uh, to attackers hijacking sometimes these small business websites and such that have been around forever, uh, have been unremarkable, but that's part of it. They have no malicious history. So in the last year or so, we have documented a number of ways how attackers acquire access to phone numbers. For example, looking for environment variables that hold credentials to services like Twilio, for example, or sometimes just brute forcing credentials for a voice over IP PBX. Today, I noticed another method built around a very old flaw in VTiger. It's an open source customer relationship management system. The flaw is 10 years old. I think it has been patched. At least VTiger has been updated a few times since then and appears to be actively maintained. But appears that this flaw is still interesting enough to use. And it's a simple directory traversal attack and being used in order to steal asterisk configuration files customer relationship management systems often sort of interface with uh, voice over IP, PPXs. So uh, that's probably why they are expecting uh, these asterisk configuration files on the same uh, server. And talking about phone systems and the abuse of them, the IRS published a news release today warning taxpayers of a significant increase in texting scams. So smishing, it's sometimes called. The IRS uh, said that if you find any of these messages, if you're the target of any of them, well, uh, report them to phishing at irs.gov. Also, the IRS is not using email or SMS to contact taxpayers about any outstanding tax issues. And Cloudflare today announced what they consider their own take on replacing CAPTCHAs, uh, the annoying images nobody's able uh, to read. Currently, uh, Google's reCAPTCHA is probably sort of the closest to a reference implementation of a CAPTCHA. Google's take on CAPTCHA works pretty well, uh, but has uh, two significant shortcomings. First of all, privacy. One of the methods Google uses is to consult, well, cookies. It's sort of setting while you're browsing the web to kind of look at your account history and uh, that way um, trying to figure out you know, how likely you are a bot or not. Secondly, uh, if you don't pass off that initial scan, and that's basically what happens when you click the I'm not a robot button, then uh, you're presented with uh, some kind of riddle, you know, some image that you have to solve, some uh, chimneys you have to find or whatever. To distinguish yourself from the machine. Well, sadly, sometimes you're not really human enough, uh, so you'll fail this and then you have to do it again. Cloudflare uh, calls its implementation Turnstile. It's available uh, to anybody, not even you don't even have to be a Cloudflare customer and you don't have to send your traffic uh, through Cloudflare. It's just a JavaScript that you install on your web page, just like you would basically reCAPTCHA. And uh, then that JavaScript instructs the browser to send a challenge uh, to Cloudflare. Uh, the challenge will be changing, and that's probably sort of one of the ways how Cloudflare is of trying to outrun some of the attackers here by varying uh, the JavaScript challenge being presented to the browser. And then when the response comes back, when you're passing the challenge, well, in that case, you the JavaScript will update the form, will add a token that then proves that you are a human. 
This does not require any user interaction, so it's totally transparent to the user. Turnstile will also take advantage of private access tokens. That's a technology that Apple is developing, supposedly an open technology, so they're hoping others will use it as well. But this is sort of assisting them in solving the challenge. And essentially what Apple does here is if the device was recently unlocked and such, of course, particular for mobile uh, devices, then uh, it sort of uh, basically proves uh, to the server asking whether or not uh, the user is a human or is believed to be a human. Remember, uh, those captures don't have to be 100% perfect. They're usually meant uh, to just you know, make attacks more difficult, make them slower, or also sort of to reduce things like spam. In patches, we got an update from Cisco fixing a flaw allowing bypassing of layer 2 network security controls like VLANs. This same issue also affects Juniper and Arista. So uh, make sure that you update your products here. It's sort of one of those fundamental things that you may be relying on in securing and segmenting your network. And Google released version 106 of the Chrome browser on Tuesday, fixing 20 different vulnerabilities, five of which are rated high. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.